son of a bitch is huge. I mean, it's like a man. It, it's big. Okay, son. You still don't understand what you're dealing with, do you? Perfect organism. Just tell me one thing, Burke. You're going out there to destroy them, right? Not to study. Not to bring back. But to wipe them out. That's the plan. You have my word on it. All right, I'm in. Let's run! Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Welcome to Perfect Organism, the Alien Saga podcast. I am your host, Jamie Prater, and I'm joined by my co-hosts. Patrick Green. Christian Matska. Andy Yee Girl. Maja Chana. Perry Chicos, or Apone. <laughs> Uh, Xander House is in the house. He is in our chat room. Welcome, Xander. And special guest, Matt John. Thanks for coming on the show. Listen, anytime, anytime you can get me. Hey, guys, (laughs) you can get me on a podcast where I can talk about aliens away from my Rogues in the House podcast, uh, where I just talk fantasy, dark fantasy, that sort of thing, uh, sword and sorcery. I'm happy. So let's go. Let's talk xenomorphs and sci-fi. Yes, awesome. let's do it. And Conan the Barbarian. Do you guys have a TikTok page, Matt? Uh, yeah, I do. I do a bunch of uh, come on in here. I'm on TikTok. <laughs> oh, <laughs> doing? Come on. Welcome to the pump. <laughs> Subscribe and do the Wednesday dance. Hurry. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Took me that long to pull out the Arnold impression. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm happy <laughs> to be just here. Started. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Yeah. Uh, so right. yeah, welcome, everybody. This is the official. I'm I'm holding myself back from doing an Arnold voice right now. This is the uh, official end of day alien day round table roundup where we get Jamie actually is about six feet away from me right now, but for the sake of our microphones, we're in separate rooms, but this is the first time that we've gotten to spend alien day together, which was freaking awesome. That was, that was, was such great. a treat for me. Um, it was great. So yeah, we're here kind of to talk about what we were all were up to today, what some of the news was. Uh, there were of course some pretty uh, spoilerific leaks I don't know if they're leaks, but they're um, things that were shared. So if anybody is worried about that, uh, maybe we can give a little heads up because uh, I think there might be some spoilers involved. But I guess kind of to get started tonight, how's everybody's alien day going? What you been up to? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like oh, we're all being too respectful. We're like, ah. <laughs> I, I watched Alien. Hell awesome. Yeah, so yeah, we, nice, we watched man. Aliens. Yeah. Nice. You know, you, I, I did one other thing that was. Uh, sort of sacrilegious and weird. Okay, you ready for it? Uh, a friend of mine wanted me to come on to his podcast uh, called They Came From The North uh, to talk about Predator. And he'd been trying to get me for a while, probably because of my incessant Arnold voices. Um, and so I finally did, and I did it today. So like 20 <laughs> minutes ago, I was talking about the Predator franchise. And now here I am with you folks. It's it's serendipitous, I tell you. <laughs> what is your what is your what is like your keyword for to get into Arnold? Mine is come on, come on, do come it, on, come on. I come think on, it's good over it. here. Yeah, or oh, you cold blooded bastard. You know, I might, <laughs> I, might, I might deep cut that. We'll see. Yeah. So it was good. What, what's going on with the rest of you guys? I feel like I, I was the guy who had to talk. Yeah. I'm not normally here. Let's go. Let's go through the line. Yeah, I can follow it up. I um I had a great day. Honestly, it was awesome. It was I. As everyone knows, I, I um, helped do the Instagram, right? So like just Instagram live this morning, I had I set up my whole alien collection. Well, I shouldn't say that. I My parents have a lot of my uh, old um, or original uh, Kenner figures, which I need to get to my house at some point. Um, but they're in a box at my parents' house. So I need to add that to the collection. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's just been great, like connecting with, the fans, the people that follow us and sharing their collections and um, just obviously the alien transmission film that we really like just, you know, watching that. And um, Matt, I watched alien too. Um, it's, it's just been for as much, even I had to work today. I'd normally the past couple of years, I've taken this day off work just to, just to um, indulge myself. 
uh, in fully immerse myself in this experience. But um, today at obviously middle of the week, I, I had to work. I, you know, I had some client meetings. It's great. Don't tell my boss, but it was awesome. And like, it was just jam packed and I can't believe it's already, we're already here at the round table. Awesome. I feel like I did my duty because I introduced, I tried to introduce the younger generation to alien. I- I'm a teacher high school. So uh, Me too. I, Oh yeah, that's right. Um, so I went to work, I wrote happy alien day on the board. <laughs> they all thought I was just talking about like, aliens in the universe <laughs> they're like oh like et they did say et they knew wow. et there so i was go. like okay um so i talked like about that film. <laughs> i know right <laughs> um no uh, you know i i think they don't they, again they don't have that shared experience of all watching the same thing unless their parents introduce them to it you know like i have a few kids who know certain movies but I told them their homework was to watch Alien tonight. I don't know if that's allowed, but that's what I told them to do. Um, And then it was really cute because then I told them it's also my husband's birthday. They sang him happy birthday and then they said happy Alien Day. It was very cute. That's what Um, Yeah. So I do have to share. They are. Yeah. I always have to share my Alien Day kind of, you know, with my husband. As you should. So as I should. So... (laughs) Um, but we kind of geeked out with him too. And he likes, he loves alien, but his passion lies more with, um, back to the future and Indiana Jones. So I got him a lot of goodies and toys and Legos and fun stuff. So it was fun. What about you guys? Christian? I didn't take the day off and I really wish that I had, um, I'm having to be a little bit strategic with my time at my job right now, but I dressed up. You know, I, I wore my Nostromo crew uh, Brett cap and uh, a very brightly colored graphic alien t-shirt and people commented on both. I don't ever wear a hat to work. So people kind of gathered around to see this thing and because it actually is worth seeing. I mean, it's, you know, it's got the, um, the gold bullion uh, embroidery and all that stuff. But yeah, I say alien day blank faces. I say LB426, blank. You know, finally I'm like, have you ever seen Sigourney Weaver in a movie? But uh nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless. Gorillas um, in the mist. What? Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's what we're celebrating. Working today. girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I did swing by the comic shop and get Marvel's Alien. Let me see this. I need to do that. This awesome. is a terrible cover, by the way. I walked by this thing three times in the comic <laughs> shop. It says Alien in small print in the middle of the book. Well, the books are in the rack like this, you know, uh, anyway, yeah. but it's really good. The art is neat. The, uh, the story is engaging and it's a, it's kind of a fresh start. And also we have a new, um, alien novel enemy of my enemy that has, um, an alien RPG supplement in the back. This is the, the third one that they've done with, uh, free league and Titan. So that's kind of a, a twofer. And then of course, free league announced, uh, pre-orders are up for the new building better worlds, supplement book for the alien RPG Mm. that um, I have a small piece, uh, some small connection to that, hopefully. So that's pretty exciting. So those were, those were like personal highlights. Obviously there's some big, bigger things that we're all going to talk about, but Oh, oh, and uh, just before bed, I showed my 10 year old a little thing called alien transmission. And I didn't, I was on the the television. So I just did a, um, a YouTube search. And of course the alien transmission deleted scene from alien pops up first mm-hmm. and so my kids are like what the hell is that and so i don't know you gotta wait gotta wait so i showed them the film and just so you guys know the first time that it cuts to the, the creepy crawl down the hallway he jumped just mm. the switch to that hallway he didn't know what he was going to see nice but, <laughs> and he kept saying i have so many questions i have so many questions but he was really into it and so then the alien transmission deleted scene was a huge letdown <laughs> Afterwards, it was actually not very good. And the version that we watched accidentally was some fan edit where they had taken the siren from the trailer and applied it. And that's not, that's not right. So, all right. That's all I have to say. How about you guys, Mash? Can I jump cool in? Just, oh, I just got to tell you guys, because I have no involvement in that short film whatsoever. Right. But I think <laughs> everyone else here did something uh, looking at the credits guys. It was awesome. Um, like director photography was that you madge 
It was. Man, it was really good. Thank you. Out of the park. Knocked it out of the park. Yes, you killed it. it. Uh, Honestly, and uh, uh, Micah's performance, very like yes excellent like honestly guys yeah i I know you're very restricted by budget and like not getting crazy and having dudes in rubber suits running around all over the place but like you really put together a tasteful project that did not feel amateur um and i say that not because i didn't have faith in you but i say it because you know sometimes (laughs) amateur things pop out when you don't have a budget you don't have all the time and the focus i thought it was rock solid so as the person who had nothing to do with it, I'm saying it live on air. It was it was fantastic. Great job. Bless you. Thank you. Thank cool. you. My favorite comment. There have been a lot of really nice comments today. My favorite one uh, was just like a few words. It said, God awful. Great sound, though. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That, I, that, that for some reason I took as a huge comment because I was like, if you thought it was awful, but that sound was great. Like sound is half of it. So I'll take that on a sound. <laughs> was, it was really good. It I didn't really see good. that comment. Thank God. <laughs> Jeez. Um, my alien day was definitely mainly consumed with that, with the transmission. Cause I, it was the first thing I did this morning was upload it. And, um, other than that, just been tracking the love fest all day and seeing the fun stuff get posted. Like the, the picture from the Fede Alvarez set, which was very cool yes. to see. And I think Super we all cool. poured over yeah. and z- z- we're pinching to zoom and, um, yeah, I had to work, but that was, that was, that was more or less it just kind of, it, that's the fun the fun thing is just like it feels like something's happening we're all in on it together and everyone's just posting a lot and it's like yeah let's let's just make a day of it uh xander says he mainly geeked out at the fede image uh the which is you know the image from the new alien film that's being shot in budapest right now and he's watching alien after this and he's also working on or planning a secret project that's alien related so awesome xander awesome tantalizing xander Mm -hmm. Uh, this was this was great. It was a different alien day. It was special in that we got to hang out the whole time, which was amazing. It was a little frustrating because I had blocked time at work, but I kind of kept getting pulled into things. So it was this constant struggle of like, oh, no, I don't want to do it. But I... So, uh, you know, I wasn't quite as present as I as I wanted to be, but we had a lot of fun. The kids got out early from school today, which was a nice surprise that we had forgot to put on the calendars. So that, <laughs> that was nice. I guess it was a staff development day that we missed somehow. <laughs> Um, but we were home, so it was okay. And, uh, you know, so we got kind of an early start on the festivities. And as Jamie knows, because he was there the whole time, we played in the yard, did a lot of Colonial Marine stuff, played in the basement, did, basically just shot a lot of rifles all day, watched Aliens, which was a lot of <laughs> fun. It. My wife made her Ovomorph cookies, my wife being the star of Alien Transmission, Micah. Um, we, uh, what else? Oh, we did puzzles from Operation Aliens. Uh, we did the Titan coloring book. You know, we did a lot of the kind of the activities, but um you know, it was it was kind of laid back. Something that I'm noticing, and then Jamie, I want to make sure you get a chance to speak also. Something that I'm noticing is the alien days have become less um, wallet intensive over the years. I don't know if you've all caught on to that too. Like I was talking to Jamie about this. I, I usually budget around alien day a little bit, like in the weeks leading up to it, I'm like, I'm going to put a little bit of money aside because like it's daddy's day to spend some money. <laughs> and and I want to, like, I want to blow money on alien day. And I have for many years past, I was doing one of this Instagram videos uh, today and I did a little walk around in my collection. And I was thinking like a lot of this stuff, especially the stuff that's kind of special is like one-off commissioned pieces for alien day. You know, it's when you've had, like the Russian nesting dolls and, you know, these just completely out of nowhere, the super seven stuff, like all these things that, you know, don't really exist anywhere outside of an alien day event when a company decides to do something special for it. And I think post the merger, uh, you know, of 20th century and uh, Disney, I think there's been a big drop off in that in terms of like licensing. And, uh, and so that's just from a, from a, a, you know, purely, wanting to spend money on alien day perspective it was a little bit weak this year of course we got the comic we got the building better worlds expansion for the rpg which is awesome um there's fire team colors. also updated there well we did that today too oh, yeah. yeah there was a fire team update which was great the kids were you know were having a great time with that um but again it's not like there's a, the limited run switch port uh which is cool they do collector's editions of games that sell out very quickly um there's the cavity colors shirts and pants that you know were available which was avp which was kind of interesting last year of course they did uh, alien aliens and alien 3 and that yeah. was a great example of a year where i spent way more money than i should have because like they were <laughs> so great i was like I, how, how where else are you gonna get an alien 3 t-shirt from you know um but this year it was just sort of like a little bit scaled back 
And for me, speaking personally, the biggest example of this is we have been really hoping for something tangible from the Fede Alvarez movie, like hoping that it would be some kind of like an official sanctioned, you know, reveal of some footage or of something in motion. And we did get an on, well, I mean, presumably on set photo. We don't know if it was, but it seems like it was on set um, with a lot of clues in it that this could be some kind of a station that it's, there's a face hugger who knows if that's an actual screen used prop or not. It looked great. That's the one from your basement. Yeah, it's the same no, one. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. That one looks better. No, but I don't think it's no, a problem. It this yeah. this one's it's commercial. The, the, you can see the yeah. seams. I, I hope this oh, really? is what they're using. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Which wow. is great. I mean, it's fine. But but that set, oh my God. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the set that. Set looks good. Yeah. So we're going to yes. talk about that tonight. But yes. but that was as soon as that dropped, Jamie and I looked at each other. We're like, that's the only thing we're going to get from the studio mm-hmm. today. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's what we're going to get. But I don't know, yeah. Jamie, what about you? Let's let's what, what, how was your railing day experience? Well, it was great as I got to spend it with you and your family and um your kids, and they got to come home early and seeing everybody running around with their pulse rifles. That was awesome. Um, yeah, and just I mean, a lot of it was on my end, um, administrative, just making posts, posting things via Squarespace to our official site, getting things up, getting things ready. Um so, but, and that's something that we do every year, but it was really, really great to spend alien day with one of my best friends. So I had not done that before, usually alien day. And I know for most of you who work, it's kind of like, especially those who work at home, you're working and then you're maybe going to a website or whatever, but to be able to spend my whole day, um, celebrating this franchise that i love was really really with some, with people that I care about was really, really fun. And I, to Patrick's point, I agree that um it was light um and it gets lighter and lighter every year and i hope uh disney slash 20th century really um wakes up and actually offers something and it feels like they i don't know if we're gonna have another alien day before fede's film i have a feeling based off something dane hallett wrote about being involved he's like he said in a few months i'll be able to talk more about it which mean makes me think the film will release by the end of this year possibly um i don't know if there's going to be another alien day before the film releases probably the holly show won't release until end of quarter 2024 is my guess um so i was a little bit disappointed that they didn't take full advantage of it it's just it, it it's disheartening for me or to me that the company disney isn't involved more um <laughs> but it is what it is we've owned it i feel like perfect organism has owned alien day for the past couple of years now um this is our day it's a fan's day and it is what we make of it and i think we we did pretty fucking awesome yeah, well, for sure. Uh, I, I echo that sentiment because that's sort of what I've seen. But I'm wondering, do you think that might be something Disney seizes on a little more? Or do you think if they were gonna, they would have done it already? Because really, if they're two months into production, they could literally be shooting on the day. You know, they're doing dailies, they're doing all these things. And the company itself maybe isn't going to do anything. But do you think that... Perhaps if the timeline was slightly different, we would have gotten more like, I don't know. I I wonder if this isn't something they won't seize upon later. And that just because of the transition, um, the merger and the timelines that maybe they haven't had the opportunity to get on it as much as they could. Like the Holly show is not that far developed. You're just, you're thinking it's, they don't give a shit. I don't think this, they don't give a shit. I mean, I will say if you go to like May 4th last year, you know, May, May the 4th, for star wars that was pretty paltry as well on disney's end they didn't really do too much this year they're doing carrie fisher um a star on the walk of fame disney didn't do a lot for the uh may the 4th and so it kind of it's in line with that kind of behavior it's strange to me like but i also feel like these studios see online fan communities is really volatile and nothing will ever be enough. So they're probably a little bit scared to get involved. That's my opinion. I don't know if that's the truth, but it is a little bit scary because you, you post something, everyone hates it or everyone thinks it's CG. I'm just, that's a, a joke to a few people who thought the photo from the Fede Alvarez film today was CG, which I thought was interesting because <laughs> I didn't read CG at all, but a lot of people did, no. which I thought, thought was interesting, hmm. but I don't know. Like I don't, I think that they give a shit, but I think their priorities are elsewhere. Um, I think they're all about commerce and money making, and there's not a lot of money making happening. However, Josh Izzo, who we interv- interviewed um, for Alien Day, and the episode is available today, talked about talking to people who worked at Disney or who work at Disney and 
um, relaying to them how important the day is and how profitable the day is for them. And he said that they know and they know how important it is, but I don't feel like they do. Or if they do, they don't really care enough. So I don't know. I don't want to harp on this too much um, because I feel like it's a day that we own now. But at the same time, we do. We wake up in the morning thinking, what are they releasing? What's going on? And there's really nothing. There's some shirts those AVP shirts, most people don't want, um, unfortunately. Um, so there wasn't really a lot to buy, and I'm always in the mood to buy something as well. But yeah, so it is what it is. But there are as many people that want an AVP shirt as wanted an Alien Three shirt, though. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Maybe. I mean, AVP has a bit more brand appeal to the video game and comic book, and I don't know beyond market. Whereas Alien Three, you saw that film; that's entirely what it is, and either. Mm. You want that on your body or you want nothing to do with it. (laughs) So, you know, when I'm going to, I'm going to talk role-playing games again for a second, because when free league got the license for alien, it was from, it was from Fox. And so they were, they had already released the the core rule book under Fox and they were releasing, um, I think it was the colonial Marine book after the merger I can't remember if this is a person that we talked to or for someone I talked to privately, but they were saying that they hand the book over and, and Disney's like, we don't know what to even do with this. This is, this is completely new to us. And they weren't against the idea. They just had to sit back and say, all right, we've never handled anything like this. We have to go through it really carefully. And it slowed the whole process down. Mm-hmm. And so as fans we're like, what the hell, where is this book? Where's this book? And then it came out, it was no big deal. And the same thing may be happening with a lot of these the, the things that 20th Century Fox was doing, Disney could do, but they, they have to work through their own system to get to it. But if you listen to the, the interview with Joshua Izzo, um, he's a fascinating guy, and he talks a mile a minute about all of the monetary aspects of it. If he wasn't such a huge fan of the, of the uh, franchise, it would be a little bit disheartening because he's just talking about, we made so much money, all the companies made money. I'm thinking, yeah, that's because we were paying that money. But he is a big fan. And you would think that he could talk the talk and get them to also see, you know, Disney, just just release things, get, get your all the people that are, are part of this IP or releasing things, get them to coordinate for the single day. But Jamie's really right. If if they're not doing it for um, for Star Wars Day, we're still further down the, the rung. And finally, yeah, that clapper, um, you know, in Fede's photo that had today's date on it which mm-hmm. may have just been, it's a promotional photo or whatever, or they're filming right now. They're, they're busy. Um, it's great that we got the photo, but they don't have time to stop and, and do, you know, a walkthrough or an interview or anything like that. And just a thought. So let's talk about the photo. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. I, I think many of us or a few of us, Christian didn't think that they were going to show anything. And I actually woke up today looking around me and Matt were talking like we're looking on Facebook to see what they drop. And there wasn't anything for a while, but they ended up dropping this really interesting photo. Um, what, how did everybody feel about that? I mean, I know there wasn't much there, but there, there's a little bit of stuff there. Certainly it feels like alien. It feels more like alien and aliens than the prequels did. Uh, I mean, a hundred percent CGI. No, so <laughs> if that is if that is a CGI image, they spent a lot of time on it because it looks really good. Yeah, it's just a well lit yeah. photo, the detail, with a digital camera. It, are, are you are you on team? This is CGI, Matt? No, not is at that, all. Not oh, okay, at all. okay, okay. <laughs> no, I know you well CGI. enough to detect your sarcasm. Um, yeah, I think uh, that image is a lot. You know what? Uh, so I heard some things about this film. Um, listen, huge grain of salt, right? But I know. Um, I have some friends who are sort of somewhat connected um, to these kind of things. And the more I think about this, I, I think this is going to be um, Fede Alvarez is going to make a Fede Alvarez film out of this. And he's a good guy to do it because I mean, even watching the first alien again tonight, I'm realizing how much it's, it's claustrophobia. It's focused it's not slasher, but it's not entirely unslasher in some ways. And I think with his slate, you know, he did Evil Dead. He did uh, Christ. What's it called? I want to say don't blink. It's not don't blink. Don't, don't, don't breathe. breathe. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Uh, again, don't blink either. Yeah, don't blink either. We'll <laughs> we'll catch you. You'll get uh, lip cancer smoking those. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Um, so I think that I think it's going to be. 
a Fede Alvarez film, and I think it's going to have slasher vibes. I think this is, I heard some things that maybe, and it's starting to line up. The cast is younger, right? It's, and, and I think this picture to me, what I heard is that this film is potentially focused on a colony. So it's like the colony's there. You've got the young people, you've got your killer in the shadows. Um, and that to me, that set photo looks colony like. It doesn't look like a window into space. It looks like it is on the ground, um, has some aliens vibes for sure. And so keep an eye on that. That's that's kind of where I'm at, is I th- I think we might be getting a very tight sort of horror film from this. With teenagers potentially. Well, well, hold on, because Isabella Merced is 21 and she's the youngest member of the cast. Is she? Yeah, there's there's 25 year olds, 26 year olds, and that's I mean, still that's. But I mean, Hollywood terms, right? Those are still how, okay. How old were the Marines in Aliens? Those guys yeah. weren't in their 30s. No, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's that it depends they what they're doing. Them. What are their roles? Yes. Yeah. Wait, Sorry. who's pushing back on what? Uh, they had to have been <laughs> in their 30s. <laughs> they were. They were in their were, 60s now. Yeah, they were in like approaching 30 or in their 30s. Some of them were some of them were in their twenties. And Sigourney, as we just were talking about tonight, was thirty six. Yeah. Thirty six yeah. or thirty seven. Yeah. Sure. Well, she's but, a little older. You know, yeah. she's the, the carryover from the previous film. But I I I see pe- people keep saying things like, Oh, it's aliens versus babies. And I'm like, I don't I don't <laughs> No, no, no. And I'm not I'm not on that train. It's just you this is this sure. is a short film. No, I I swear <laughs> it's it's strictly based on what I heard. Um and again, I'm not I'm not coming, guys. This is what I heard. Breaking news. It's just <laughs> if it comes to pass, there's just certain things I have heard that things are kind of moving in the direction. So I don't know. We'll see. I don't think That's it's going to be. You have sex and the alien kills you in a, in a cabin <laughs> by the lake. You know, that's that's not what I'm saying. But I feel like this guy has the gig for a reason, and I think he's going to aim it in that direction. I mean, his other claim to fame is he did he produced Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, right? Or whatever they recent. called it, yeah. something with a chainsaw in Texas. Um, so I don't know. I, I feel like there could be truth to that. It's, I the, just oh, go, go ahead, ahead, Mitch. All I was going to say is the the movie that you're the picture you're painting, Matt, a little bit of just like a contained space movie, as in just you know a single building or just in in these hallways or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, whatever. I'm I'm open to anything, but that excites me a lot. What were you going to say, Jamie? I was just uh, talking to Patrick today as we were and Micah when we were watching Aliens and I, of course thinking about but I have a, an issue with a young cast. I'm more concerned about the complexity of character and we were talking about how complex Ripley is and all of these the Marines and everyone else and they're not just one note characters. They're characters with a lot going on. That's my biggest concern is that whoever whoever these people are um I don't know how long this film is going to be. Hopefully it's a good two hours and 15 minutes or two hours and 20 minutes or whatever. These characters just need to have complexity. They need to not be teenagers in a slasher film. Um, th- that is a concern of mine. And despite my love for Fade's or films, like hunger games or something, I mean, not yeah, it, like I just, hunger games. yeah, uh, the hunger games. Yeah. Hunger games. Actually. I, I thought was good. I thought, yeah, you those, fucking those love the hunger games. Jay. I do. You, you, I thought the characters, about this shit. the characters in hunger games were fantastic. But, and but am were I, am I kind of locating something like you don't want it to feel like YA fiction kind of no like, for, agreed. But I also yeah. don't want it to be as much as I love Fede's um, uh, evil dead. Those characters were nothing. They were just props, uh, but it worked that way. It really, really worked. And um, they it, like it was it's a solid film. It's a great film. In fact, I liked the film so much that I went to go see Evil Dead Rise with those expectations. And I was sorely disappointed. That movie was trash. Um, it oh, no. Good, oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. It looked good, though. Um, <laughs> but I just want I don't want this to be this teenage alien slasher film where you, no one really cares. Everyone's spouting out these Gen Y lines like <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to repeat myself. I've said this before, but I also have faith in him. Based, I've seen Girl in the, uh, in the Spider's Web. I thought it was fantastic. I thought those characters were great. Um, I think it's a really underrated film. Also, Fede won, uh, uh, I think it was a Golden Globe for his show Calls, which is an audio-based show on Apple. Um, it's uh, the, Their audio episodes, it is incredible. You guys should, I want to say watch it, but you should turn it on Apple. It's just these like 20-minute stories, and it's all like they're audio dramas. And it is. It was produced during the pandemic. It 
was amazing. And again, he won an award for it. And the characters were real and they were complex and it, you just kind of didn't know what was going to happen next. So I have faith in him, but at the same time, I'm also very cautious. I, uh, well, about, by virtue of it being, uh, you know, like a space movie in the future, we're probably will be able to, they'll probably be able to avoid the, this kind of hacky, yeah, Gen Z, like uh, fake Gen Z thing that mm, they do in movies these days. They, but They have to even more, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't have that set in the future with like, yo, nice drip or whatever. Yeah, unless earlier. you're James Cameron and it's called <laughs> The Way of Water and those, uh, and those kids in that movie talk just like that. Did they? So, yeah. I didn't see it yet. I can't. What's up, bro? Can do it. Come on, oh. bitch. I mean, like, that's oh, yeah. how they talk. Yeah. If I hear bra, then yeah. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I hear that enough in my day job. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, gold by breaking quarantine, you risk everyone's lives on God for real. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mash. Thank you. Jeez. You understand what you, you speak in my language, Perry. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What are we um, supposed to use, man? Harsh language? <laughs> <laughs> can I just uh, say, though, I, I think there's some really great things that we can pull out of the photo, right? And I, I definitely want to touch on Xander's point because I got huge alien isolation vibes from this picture, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, and it's probably my PTSD. Like, I was like, oh, that's the med bay. Uh, I need to run <laughs> and get out of here, you know? Um, but just to like see, you know, something that looks kind of like the save station, um, in the photo and like yeah. the hallway, the lighting, like a lot of that fits. And so I, I think there's even like way in the back, like the window shutters. I'm yeah. like, oh man, that looks so cool. And then the, the sign on the top, like there's a airlock and then there's a, something. Yeah. Reception. So and it definitely feels back. Further back, Same. you have cryo lab and uh, genetics. Yes. Lab. But I don't know why That's... reception, the word reception makes me think we're on a space station. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least hope right. doesn't have a reception area. Right. You know, Nostromo doesn't have a reception area. That's something has, has docked with this place. And this is where you go to, to unload. I don't. And to your point, Christian, in those auditions that leaked, um, they talk about a ship floating in space that they kind of come in contact with. So it could be a space station. Yeah. Yeah. That's where my mind went. Um, I'm excited. But I like the containment of it. You Mm -hmm. know, I like, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, Um, no. I, I went to I, my mind went to space station, which I wouldn't mind either. I I am anticipating, like you were saying, that horror feel of containment. I'm glad they didn't give us this like grand vista or like a space scene, and they kind of closed it in for us. Mm-hmm. Um, the presence of airlocks, though, means it doesn't matter if it's a space station or a colony, you are trapped. You have to stay within right. the the human manufactured walls because there's death on the outside. And now there's yes, death on the inside. Yes, because if it's being terraformed, it's not breathable air. Right. Exactly. Right. And it's so, a to- total presumptuous A to B, you know, correlation I'm making. But like if you think about you know how much people love isolation and how much the whole idea of just evading this thing because it means certain death. There's no real fighting it like, and they get the guy who made a movie about going undetected. And this guy who's also, you know, not does not hold back with gore. It's like the tension and the gore and just the fear, like the, whatever the horror of it all is the thing I'm most excited about. And the thing I'm most hopeful for is that he can match that with, you know, the other important stuff in a movie, like Jamie was saying, like characterization and, and all the other yeah. stuff and sound <laughs> and sound better. <laughs> so there's, there's one other point. Um, yes, it looks like alien isolation, but if you put a side by side shot of, of any hallway from, from Sevastopol next to this, none of the details actually match up, which is fantastic. This is a brand new design. That's evocative. They're both evocative of the Nostromo. But that gigantic Whaling Utani logo on the wall is the James Cameron yeah. Whaling Utani logo. Mm-hmm. And nothing like that exists in Sevastopol because that's closer to the alien timeline or, or time frame, I mean. So either this was a, a mistake 
on the uh, set designer's part, which I think is really unlikely, or this gives us another hint on where this is going to take place. This could be just before Aliens. This could be just after Aliens. This could be post-Alien 3. We don't know. Yeah. And they find the Sulaco. And they find the Sulaco. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, though, I did go angry nerd for a moment with Jamie because I was like, the Sevastopol is manufactured by Lorenz Sistec Development. It's not a Wayland yutani ship, so why, why would they have the emergency override safe station on it? And I think that's not accurate because it is actually a different it, it is not a, literally the isolation safe station, but it's a window into my own personal right. hangup set. Like I need to get over because <laughs> I shouldn't be looking at this thing and just ripping it to shreds on first sight, you know, but that being said, I, I think it's a really moody evocative shot. And like I've said on many frame rate episodes and many other places, I think Fede is a great fit for this. And I think don't breathe is a case study in how you make a tightly contained horror film with very minimal dialogue, but tons of character development development i'm choking because i'm so emotional you know <laughs> how to do it in a way that feels really genuine and, and and earned and scary and the way that he is so careful with how he constructs sequences like he uses a lot of very extended steady cam sequences that you know take you on a ride and i think looking in that hallway i was like i can't wait to get dragged down that thing by the feet screaming you know i think that's going to be a great a great setup so i feel you know i personally go back and forth on this all the time and as Jamie was present for today on our, we took a hike together and we were talking about this, you know, like I go from feeling really optimistic about it to feeling like, oh, like we got, why aren't we hearing anything? And then I remember, oh, they just started filming a month ago, you know, because they got pushed back a month. So like, maybe I should just chill the fuck out. But then I'm also like, but then I feel disrespected by Disney because I'm like, you should be giving our show actually literally i'm, I'm going to be honest with that like we should be getting something we should be getting some access to something we should be getting if not interviews at least like we should be getting something to share like they should be collaborating with us at least from a publicity standpoint because otherwise it just feels kind of standoffish you know and just kind of not not to derail this conversation but you know i think a big issue with the merchandising stuff that's going on is when you go to the websites of people who used to make things for alien day they don't have that license anymore you know we saw that most clearly with the comics, but also, you know, places like uh, like Fright Rags, a great shirt company that I bought many alien things from. They don't have the license to it anymore. So, like, at the end of the day, one of our traditions is we like we all pick one thing out, you know, and I was like hunting through the websites that I used to go to to get the kids action figures because like a lot of them aren't being manufactured anymore. And it just goes to this whole thing of Disney is very clearly trying to control the message in a much more direct way than 20th century used to for better or for worse. And it's what they do with it, I think, that matters. But giving us an alien day where all we got from official sources was this like set photo with a prop face hugger on it. I don't know. It just feels like, I don't know. It would have been well, nice to yeah. get a message from Fede or something or something for fans just to sort of wet the whistle a little bit. Yeah. It feels a little lazy. We'll just put it there. It feels a little <laughs> all lazy. All right, Sarge. Oh, all right. <laughs> that cigar is getting damp. I saw it. <laughs> uh, I, I think, like, but then I think <laughs> about um, Star Wars Celebration, which they just had in London, and they showed at Celebration uh, images, moving images of Andor season two. You know, there weren't a lot because they're still filming the show right now. Um, but I'm like, this is a 10 hour show that they've been filming since November of last year, and they were able to show something. So I, I, I kind of agree with you, Patrick. I feel like it's just this its just this missed opportunity. It comes, even though it might not be them not caring, that's what it feels like. It's like, dude, like, what do you... And also, they announced an Alien series th going on three years ago, at least, um, and we've seen nothing from that. And so it's like, give us a little bit something more, but... I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what's going on. We have been in contact with Fede Alvarez for over a year. Um, we've been talking to him for a while. Um, we haven't heard from him since production started and pro probably because of those leaks. So there's probably like a do not talk to the press. Do not talk to anyone who's involved, not involved in the picture, I would imagine. But uh, yeah. Do, do you think they might just be kind of scared shitless with like they don't know how to market anymore? Like how to market this anymore or what angle to take because this actually your last few episodes we were talking about you know the covenant uh blom camp situation maybe they're like uh we got to get the film and then figure out how we're going to present it so at this point they're like throw the 
I don't know why I'm devil's advocating for Disney right now, but I kind of <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm just trying to, you know, uh, the classic. You're, oh, it's good. You're getting it's good. something. It is I, great, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. You, like I, I, I just feel like they don't necessarily know what to do with it yet, and it might be a direct to Hulu thing, right? I had the same conversation. Which is with, not. No. It is so theaters. they're going to do some theatrical it's coming to theaters. Yeah. So did they wipe Hulu? No, not uh, no. Not. I think uh, some of it has to do with the O'Bannon estate and some contracts oh. that are previously in place. Diane O'Bannon alluded to this in a post she made. I asked her yeah. to expand on it. She declined. So, um, so I- yeah, no, I guess I guess what I'm saying is I feel like they are actually confused about what to do with this franchise. Actually, Christian, what you said about where they get this RPG book and like, I don't know what to do with this. And the fact that like now they're now they're they've got this coming out. They don't have the film. They don't know how they're marketing it. It makes me think of Prey. Prey is something that was like successful mostly with the fans, except for guys who don't like women on YouTube. Um, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but there's some of that going around. Um, and like the critics liked it. And it seemed to be very successful by all metrics. Have you heard anything else about that? They've not mentioned any kind of follow up. It's like, do they. I don't know. I feel like they don't necessarily know what to do with this shit at the moment. And I don't know if they have their Kevin Feige or whoever is steering a ship here. The the question you're raising is like the other side of the coin of the question that's in my mind the most, which is like the, the you're asking, like you're wondering, you know, how are they, what's their angle going to be? And I'm wondering what their angle is like, what space this movie will occupy in the series, because you have this, trilogy that of course is unique in each chapter but is uh you know part of a grand narrative whatever then they have this uh movie to try and you know i guess a you could call it a cash grab if you want or they wanted to maybe restart everything with resurrection then you have these you know whatever the spin-offs you'd call avp and then uh legacy prequels or whatever but this on its face is kind of the type of movie that I'm super uninterested in right now, which is like the long, the long tail legacy, whatever requel installment, like, but to us, I I don't think any of us have been looking at it that way. And especially because they have an exciting filmmaker attached to it and all that, but it's just like interesting. I'm worried the, if I have any worry, which I I don't really, I'm mainly very excited Mm -hmm. is that like, this is going to be a kind of, uh, you know, soft an enter- reboot. yes, like or just like showing tendencies that these soft reboots do where they're just like very, very concerned about pleasing people. Yes. Safe. Mm-hmm. This, this feels yes. safe to me. And, and, and that's too, I, like Jamie, I know that you're like, I want to have the good characters. I want to, them to be memorable. And I'm kind of like uh, stepping back a bit where it's like, if this thing looks good, it sounds good the characters don't piss me off and the script doesn't insult me. And we got some good claustrophobic space violence. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be okay with it. So like, I'm trying to manage my own expectations. Totally. And that's something I need to do as well. And I think for me, the bar is, it's it's hard to go below the bar after the original trilogy. It really is. Like it's, it's, as we all know, like it's hard to kind of not expect that kind of greatness but it's also it's okay to and i i hear you matt and and i am usually the one on on your side of this conversation but i have to say like everybody in this room right now would chop an arm off to direct an alien film right like i'm not speaking i mean i don't know if you literally would but i i would consider it i mean it is one of those things where it is like one of the ultimate marquee opportunities that has defined the careers of directors for the last 45 years yeah it is like a hugely important thing I'm not saying anything against Fede Alvarez because, again, I want to reiterate, I think he's a great choice for this. But what I what I am saying, though, is if I'm Fede Alvarez, I am not thinking I need to appease the studio. I need to make sure that I like play by the rule book. I'm thinking I'm going to do anything that it takes to create art with this because I have one shot. And now Eminem is in my head, the eight mile. But I only have one shot. and I got mom's spaghetti on my shirt. And this is like the only thing that I can do. <laughs> to cement my my one chance in in the in the legacy of alien so like do fucking whatever it takes Spat, sabotage things like bring the studio mm-hmm. down with you but make something artful with it because it 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 needs that this is not james bond you know like this is not yeah. just one of those yeah. franchises where you can just kind of pump out installments and people will be happy with yeah. it this it has to be something to me 
that I think breaks past that. And largely to that point, the prequels, Alien Resurrection, they were all safe. ambitious. These were all safe. They were visually, they look great, but they were just re- very, in my opinion, very safe scripts that kind of danced around the same ideas that we've we've seen over over and over there. You know, and then Covenant, I think, was the safest they, in terms of. They take of, some swings. Like they Prometheus do, they is do, a swing. Prometheus it's a is little bit swingy, of a swing, yeah. but it, it's not, uh, to me, it just, it doesn't feel, I don't feel, I don't know. I just feel like they're they're fairly safe films. I don't feel like Aliens or Alien or Alien 3 specifically are safe films at all. I think that they no. they went for, they, they went for the sky with those and two of them they succeeded with and one of them they didn't. Um but I, I I I agree with you, Patrick. I think that uh, it needs to be unsafe. I, I, but like Matt, to a point that you're making, like maybe if it's just these things, I I think they need to strive for more than just being safe. Like, but I, at the I, same I, time, like I, yeah, ideally, they, they I, will I, piss people off if it's just, um, what do you call it, uh, Evil Dead in space. Like, and sure. the characters aren't memorable. I guess it's like for me, after some people being pissed and fans being divided and all of these things if it is a solid good a solid seven out of ten i'm happy as a fan i get what you're saying and i there's so much pedigree in this series that it should just fire on all cylinders and hit a home run i just don't feel like we're going to get it i actually think the holly series has more potential to really bring something new and I mean, shit, man, Fargo is one of the best shows on TV. That's where my uh, that's where my real faith is for this. We should segue and, to those. Yeah, who's to ready that. to recap? Thank what? You. That was my professional segue, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so, OK, uh, talking about Noah Hawley series, three images were dropped by AVP and they have their watermark on them. So it looks like they were exclusively dropped to AVP, which is strange. I Not felt strange, the- good, good for them, but it was just like, how do you, what, like I was telling Patrick, like, aren't there NDAs involved in this stuff? How are like, I know that people who have read the script, some of the scripts to the, I'm like, what, what's going on with this where there's absolutely no word from the Fede Alvarez film, but all the shit is spilled for the Holly series. Like, and honestly, the reaction from that stuff that's being spilled is not good. But you guys yeah, should, where's our you should have watermarks. You should have <laughs> watermarks. That's what I was going to say. Like Patrick was saying earlier, I I actually had that exact thought today where I was like, they should bring you guys in a little on this. You're a big voice in this community. Um, and I'm I'm saying that like I love this series. It's my it's on equal footing with Conan the Barbarian stuff for me. Like Alien is my other love. Um, and it just really does occur to me that you guys have cornered the fan base as far as voracious fans they're all here listening to this and it is slightly absurd to me that you're not getting these sorts of breadcrumbs that you can fire out so i'm just saying uh, i'll suck it up i'm just I saying will say though we did have i mean we again we've been have been in conversation with fede alvarez he did record us something last year fox before the merger like we yeah. were involved a little bit more than yeah, we yeah. are now um for whatever reason, um, whoever the AVP people talk to feel comfortable enough to just drop NDA material in their lap, Christian. Uh, and well, I like them too. I got to say that I like oh, AVP yeah. too. On that. Me too. We do. No yeah, shit. Yeah, we all no do shit. nothing. Yeah. But if you listen, I mean, I, I, you know, we should just ask them honestly. But you know, Adam, um, he's saying, you know, we we're we decided to release a couple. It isn't that. Noah Hawley or Noah Hawley's people gave them stuff specifically to release on alien day. This is from whatever this collection of items, you know, of images that, that they are holding on to. They released some last fall. They released some today in anticipation of there being nothing else released. So again, how they have them, I don't know. Um, the images though, man, it's just, I, God bless anyone that's excited about that series. I, I, <laughs> this is not the way to roll it Speak out. Speak on it. Well, you know, <laughs> Wendy, the choir. <laughs> Wendy and Peter Pan are are out there with their samurai swords in the yes, woods. Swords, swords in the forest, man. Dual wield. <laughs> but 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 dual wield. It's just an image. It you is. Know, I don't I don't want to be the, the the angry fan. I don't want to be what Patrick was a minute ago, raging about. Well, that doesn't make sense because Sebastopol was, you know, I, but Lorenz Sistek. 
you give us this image with with no no nothing Context. and then yeah. oh my god so it, it's it's um prodigy corporation runs prodigy city you know and and the guy's name is like mike prodigy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> mr it's prodigy much. it's too much the fire starter um, sorry wouldn't the acid melt the blades of the sword yes. it just seems dumb <laughs> Come so on. maybe, but maybe that's a simulation, right? Maybe that's one of those situations well, where it's like, a, it's like a danger room or some shit. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. I, I actually would, thought which, about that too, Matt. Yeah, uh, yeah. but why would you? Try but I'm also, well. yeah, I'm also not jazzed about that. Like holographic rooms and my <laughs> alien shit. Like that's part of the thing that bugged me about Prometheus is I want the technology to look on a level, right? Right. Yeah. I never want to be closed minded about anything, particularly in sci-fi. But like aliens and trees. Just don't yeah. do it for me. <laughs> it just feels like Requiem. Is, Maybe on, is what yes. It is like. yeah. yes. In a comic yeah, yeah, book. Yeah. Like we're in you know, Colorado again. In a comic book, I feel like it, I, I can, that's like the medium for it where I, I'm i down to see an alien in every setting, but like. Oh. I know. There's something about that. You take it away from the industrial environment and it just, eh, I'm not sure if I want this. But I will I would say feel- this. Well, go ahead, Jimmy. Go ahead. Go ahead, Patrick. So I, I'm I'm flip-flopping at in a, in the midst of a flip-flop. I'm flip-flopping all over the place. I'm very emotional about these upcoming projects, and it's making me do weird things with my opinions. <laughs> Up until like seven minutes ago, I had been espousing this idea that the best alien film you could possibly do would be something that was like obsidian, right? It was this polished, self-contained, terrifying thing that didn't depend on anything else in the universe, you know, that we know of. It was just its own little story. And that Fede's film, if if I could have my perfect vision of it, would be that. It would just be like a perfect clockwork horror movie in the alien universe, and that I'd be happy with it. I'm still not saying I would not be happy with that. But I did just a few minutes ago say that I want a swing for the fences, avant-garde, take your chance and make art and tear the studio down if you need to kind of a thing. If there's anybody I can think of who's an exemplar of that, it's Noah Hawley, not just with Fargo, which I agree is one of the great things on television I've seen in my lifetime, but also with Legion, which is the Mm. most genuinely from beginning to end fucking bizarre Marvel show you could possibly imagine that it never for a second even feels like it is. I mean, it just feels like it's this complete freewheeling, schizophrenic, beautiful kaleidoscope, right? So... This is to say, I have been guilty this entire time of making relentless fun of the Holly series because of the ways that things have been leaked out <laughs> and with character names like Wendy and Hermit and things like slapstick comedy it duos. I think Hermit. it's Hermit. Her- yeah, oh, it's Hermit. Hermit. Okay. And, you know, well, the slapstick comedy Hermit. thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's just there's a lot of things that are easy to make fun of right this like rooftop city with the katanas it's it is all it is all ludicrous that being said lud- ludicrousness ludicrosity ludicrousness in the hands of a genius makes incredible art noah hawley i think is an actual genius creatively i think he's an amazing creative person so what i'm saying is noah hawley swing for every fucking fence that you see that we don't see and take us somewhere crazy and use the beautiful long form format of storytelling for you know episodic television and do something wild with it you know like this to me i agree with what's been said just a moment ago to me this is the example of like let's see where this can take us and let's kind of blow the lid off i have to push back on jamie a little bit because to me, Covenant and Prometheus, the, the reasons why I, I love Covenant and the reasons why I kind of enjoy some of Prometheus. We're watching it tonight, by the way. We're, we're literally watching Covenant after we stop the call tonight. I'm going to force him like a uh, clockwork orange. Um, is, you're going to do the fingering? Is that what you're saying? You're do the, <laughs> oh, I'll do the finger. I yeah. can't help it. Yes, I will. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, this is getting weird. Um, but, but the reason, though, is because I do feel like both of those divert in brave and strange ways. I think that they become worse movies in both cases when they don't do that. I think Covenant is a great example of that, which has 45 minutes of some totally avant-garde crazy shit that is then interrupted by, you know, really just returning to the kind of beat-for-beat beat basics, and it kind of makes it a much worse movie. But Prometheus, for the most part, stays in that territory of like, we have never really seen this. There are story beats we've seen, right? But like, I mean, Prometheus gave us the engineers and it gave us all these kind of crazy ideas and they're not successful, That which is, which to me, I think you can't really make art and be successful all the time unless you're like the Beatles and then, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want. But I think it could be cool to see Noah Hawley go fucking crazy on this thing. Go fucking crazy, Noah. Go fucking crazy. My only fear with it is is tone, right? Because Alien, uh, if you get really weird with the tone or or you go too far off in the weeds with the tone, it might not work. If you're trying to do like weird, awkward comedy in an Alien thing, I'm not saying it can't work. I'm saying I don't see it. Mm -hmm. So 
that's my only reservation with the holly that and the swords in the woods is fucking weird but whatever we'll see someone to bring the freudian strain back a little bit and it seems like there's more this doesn't sound funny but i feel like there's more sex on tv than in movies these days Mm. and i don't know i don't i'm not saying i want sex scenes in it i'm just saying like i don't know i don't know there's a dimension <laughs> to, to the alien that someone someone get me out of here someone get me off of this what else should so we you're talking, talking about, about <laughs> HBO actually sex. in the you're forest ta- and she's swinging wait <laughs> yeah. wait i have the perfect thing no. to take us out of this you guys were there was a lot of arnold um talk before can i play Whoa. something this is from this this is from the set of uh alien transmission please even the lowest lines super robotic okay I know I did a little inflection on that first line. Okay. Poor Andy. Is that me? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> did I sound like Arnold? No, no, no. Oh. You um you were asked to do a more robotic take and you oh, said god. I don't want to sound like Arnold. Yeah, the, well, we that would never happen. Into doing Arnold impressions. There's no mistaking that. I am the I have the worst impression, so I'm not even going to attempt. Um <laughs> Sometimes the worst are the best, Andy. Sometimes the worst are the best. I mean, that is true. (laughs) God, that was a pop. Man. Well, I I think that um, there, of course, is stuff coming out. I I, I wish that we were more involved, not just as a podcast, but I wish there was a little bit more fan outreach. Um, But there has been, there was more this year than there was last year, quite honestly. Um, the, The official Alien Facebook page did a couple of posts. We have the movies that were re-released in theaters. So they are more involved this year yeah. than they were last year. There's just not a lot for us to buy or to, there was not a lot of licenses given out for, you know, these other, you know, companies to make things for us to buy, which is kind of disappointing. But um, I, I am excited that at least they seem a little bit more involved this year that they kind of know like, yeah, we got to get more on the game. But uh, to a point that I think Matt, you were making, I agree. I don't think that they know what to do with, this IP in terms of marketing. And honestly, um, even our reactions tonight and our criticisms tonight, they're probably terrified of seeing that again. They're terrified of like releasing something and all of these fans like, well, I mean, it's one of the reasons why you say on Facebook or social media, Patrick, that kind of negativity that like everyone has an opinion. And I think it might just be easier to take the 1986 approach and there's no magazine article. I mean, there's only magazine articles and there's silence until they're ready to release. So uh, honestly, I kind of, pre- I kind of prefer that. I think there's a skittishness with studios now. And I think, you know, you can call it playing safe, but I think it is the smarter move on their part just because like Patrick was saying, he got like angry with it, like an image. I'm not, you know, you're allowed to totally. And then like, there's so much flip-flopping and then there's over analyzation mm. and there's like, what is, what am I seeing? And I think they should just let the property speak for itself. Definitely wet the appetite, you know, get us excited. But I think with a property like this, we keep talking about the success and let's be honest there have definitely been more failures than successes in this franchise. And I think they have to kind of ease, ease us back in. But like I say, I think they should, I, like you were saying, Patrick, I, I feel like what we're saying is we either want it like super classic, you know, like, like go back to the original as far as like that feeling or like swing for the fences. You know, we can't have that like, mediocre middle ground they're trying to be this and yet they're trying to be that like be something and whatever it is you're going for make it great that's what i want whatever it is they're aiming for i hope they succeed with that aim Mm -hmm. and i think i'll be happy i'm also glad that there's no commentary like we, we've discussed this mm-hmm. on the film on right. the show before in terms of like even Noah Hawley came out and they interviewed him a little bit about his ideas for an alien film and that kind of pre commentary about something that's not even barely in pre production and people kind of went off on it, which they're going to do what they're going to do but we don't have them saying a young Latin X woman, you know from from Earth is on this and the space station and blah 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 like can you imagine 
what the you know the the snowflakes would say if they read that <laughs> about an alien film like yeah. how like they would melt their shit like they would they would lose their shit like over yeah. that they would think this is some woke whatever even though the original trilogy was heralded by a woman way before her time but woke if shit. they were to it's like, still if, woke as shit yeah that's yeah what I mean. it totally totally is yeah but they, in the good in way. these Yes. Yeah, and 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 these times though, in the intended to, way. If, yes, if exactly. they were to come out, if if it, the if, if the lead star is a woman, and they kind of play that up a little bit, I just think it, it's it would it wouldn't mean doom for the film because if the film's going to be successful, it's going to be successful. But I think it might change the online chatter. Right now, we don't know anything, well, so we're reacting think, to essentially nothing. Well, do you think that initial reaction to the Holly statement is why they're pulling back so much? I, I think know. so. Maybe because there was chatter about there was a lot of negativity like right from the get go. So mm. maybe they saw that and they're like, let's just back off. What's yeah, so funny I mean, though with the yeah. not with the Holly statement? Just just to go back to it for a moment, I I don't understand why everybody's so like up in arms about it because it was a really innocuous thing that was actually it was the the interviewer was the one who said inequality and holly was just like yeah it'll it'll address issues of inequality and like a, and and a few other things but like it won't be right. a ripley story i think was the full quote right. that he was saying so like it, it was very there was no like bait in that at all and the fact that this jamie this is why i don't go on fucking facebook the fact <laughs> that like people you would have thought somebody shot their daughter in the street it was like people were screaming about this and saying like oh alien went woke oh my god this is like doom for the for my mother like the people were so upset about this like completely ridiculous meaningless statement like i don't think he needs to tell us what the movie's about you know, but like, it's who fucking cares if he does? Like, it's just not a big deal. You yeah, know, I don't want to see you're any deal... inequality on my corporate commentary <laughs> yeah. films. <okay? laughs> that, thank you. Like, what, what, are you like, what are you talking? What are you talking about? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, uh, aliens woke. Holy shit! Nothing yeah. else. <laughs> Can have Speaking of <laughs> all actors or... being sacrificed to a to a corporation in the first one, you know, part of the entire text. <sighs> no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of Sigourney Weaver, did you guys catch that variety piece with her? Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting oh. that she said she really did want to make the Neil Blomkamp film, which he's also had another film announced today with uh, Joel Kinnaman as a star, a sci fi film. And the guy okay. who did the drawing of Sigourney in the uh, in the face hugger birth alien Xeno suit thing uh, <laughs> posted it on Twitter today, too. He's like, hey, there's a piece of art that I did for Blomkamp that was oh, really Are fun. you serious? Oh yes, gosh. it was today. Oh today. Wow. And it was it was actually a nice post. He's like, here's like a version from the late 70s. And he when he was like a little <sighs> kid, he had drawn like an alien, you know. And then he's like, and here's like a slightly later one. And it was the Blomkamp thing with Sigourney mm. with the suit on. And he, and all the comments again were like, oh, but if only we had gotten this masterpiece, we yeah. would be so happy yeah. today. And I'm like, you don't know what you dodged. Yeah, yeah. He's a we, dope we, artist. Like his 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 yeah. art is yeah, great. Sure. Great work. Yeah. But but why also, is it still getting shared all the time? You guys also apologized too hard on the last episode for your uh, <laughs> riff. Yeah, we actually I kind oh, of agree really? based off of information that we heard later. Yeah. Not to say that we should sit around character assassinating Neil yeah, Blomkamp. I, know, I don't I think that we should do that, but we did. Yo, he sucks. <laughs> we were privy to some information. Jeff, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> we were privy to some information about some more details about the Blomkamp film, and uh, I. If, I think we were kind of vindicated in some ways. Like it wasn't going to be anything good. It really, it just really wasn't. It was going to break every rule that the original films and the prequels have had set up. It wasn't going to be any good. And it's um, fair that you guys are like, I, I get why you're walking things back. You don't want to be part of toxic fandom. I totally get that. It's just when I was listening as a, as a fan, I was just kind of like, guys, it's okay. It's, it's all right. Like, <laughs> I feel like most of what you said was pretty justified to be fair. Sweet. Yeah. Redacted. Apology <laughs> or uh secure that shit, private. Yeah, secure that shit. <laughs> yeah, more like Blom can't. That was Look a parry. Into one. My eye. Yeah. <laughs> Look into my eye. <clears throat> After doing three episodes though on Blomkamp, I'm burned out on Blomkamp and I, <laughs> I I realized today that I was applying it to Noah Holly because I'm feeling the same way of like just stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. Either you make your thing or you don't. And I know he is making it. He, he certainly is. And on, on, you know, the talent scale, I do put Noah Hawley way above, you know, Blomkamp, but I'm just exhausted by 
you know, and we just did it. We just fucking did it. We just tore apart three images that were shared, knowing nothing about them. We have no <laughs> idea. It could be a dream sequence. It doesn't, we have, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I just say this about the, about the studios and the alien day thing? I like, I guess for me personally, I don't care whether it's awesome that like Fede keeps up with, with us a little bit and, and like posted that um, photo today. Right. Like that's cool. I don't really like ever expect anything out of the, the actual filmmaking director crew. It'd just be cool if the studio would just like wave back at us. I feel like mm. we're sitting at the window, like waving, like, Hey guys, yeah. we're here. <laughs> and if they could just wave back and be like, Hey, we see you. That's cool. Happy alien day, everybody. By the way, we're working on X, Y, Z projects. Yep. Just something. They're, something. they're coming out later or something nothing. like that. You know, yeah. and we just like, don't get, no one waves at us. And it just, fe- I'm just like, I feel sad. My heart feels Aww. sad. I'm waving. And they shouldn't just wave at us when they have something to sell to us, you know, like when the movie's ready. And yeah, I feel like right. that's kind of like, oh, you're you're the most important thing, and we're when we have something that we want you to promote, um, and that I don't like that either. Like we're going to promote something we believe in, um, and we, you know, perfect organism. We have I think over seventy five thousand followers uh, collectively in our like in our repertoire like in terms of uh our social media and you know we we're a really big show like we have a huge amount of downloads almost um, six hundred thousand downloads almost six hundred thousand yeah. yeah i mean we're a huge show we're the biggest show and we're ranked in, too. in fandom yeah and we're like number usually like number 15 in our genre in america so we're we want to get behind things like we're, we're desperate to get behind things but i i i think andy you said it Right. I think the studio is skittish. I think that they're just, they don't know what move to make. Um, and I, I, at the same time, I don't blame them either. I, I get it. Like they've had more failures and successes. What do you do? How do you do this? How do you, how do you traverse that field? It's a minefield. Well, yeah. And they're, they're also building the thing while this is happening. Right. Like I say, with this, this film is shooting right now. So I don't know. There's a definitely a reluctance right. with leaking anything out when you don't necessarily know what the finished product even is. So I'm somewhat, Hey, listen, guys, Disney's awesome. I'm actually a plant. They hired me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Alien day. A representative is. Here what? You, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we should probably wrap. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I could sit here and talk with you guys all night. Yeah. Um, it's been a really great alien day, but also just, on the heels of the release of alien transmission, which took so much work over the course of almost a year that we've been working on this. Of course, I was talking about ideas with Patrick today. It was a year <laughs> in, in two hours. It will have been one year since we started working on this. Cause that's when the conversation <laughs> came up. True. True. So I, I, I'm just, again, I, I don't even want to hang up. Like I just could talk with you guys all night long about something that I love so much. And there's so much to be excited about too. Like a year from now, I mean, we're going to be talking about a movie a year from now. We're going to be awaiting the release of the Holly show. You know, like it's going to be completely, we will have moved on from the past, from the original trilogy. They will be in, in, in hindsight at that point. So I'm excited about the future. Amen. Happy Same. alien day, everybody. Amen. Oh, I also, uh, last thing though, I want to say we have gone through a rebrand. We've released some t-shirts today and that is the product of a, a gentleman named Jason Judah, who is based off based in the UK. He is really amazing. He's really talented. Um, we look this good because he made us look this good. Um, Patrick and I and Christian kind of worked on some tweaks for our, uh, our logo and uh, our social media channels. But uh, I attribute that our ability to do that to how amazing that art was. So I just want to make sure that we shout out to Jason, how important and integral his work has been uh, for us as a show. Um, So thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. And also thank you to patrons who helped us to commission Jason to do that. And we have some Patreon shout outs that we should do, but I'm not going to do it now because it's the end of the episode and it's a long day and I don't have your names pulled up, but we do have some new patrons. Thanks. So we'll do that on our next full show, which will be coming out soon. And, um, Thank you to everybody who supports us and this whole incredible project. And thank you to Jamie for writing transmission. And thank you to everybody else who participated in pulling the story together and the filming and everything else that went into it. And I got to say, like wrapping that thing two days ago was a profound experience. Last night. Yeah. (laughs) Down to the wire. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) It was great, guys. I I I do I mean it when I say it. I uh I was a little worried because I was like, ah, what if it's 
not Grace. <laughs> <laughs> go on we had that worry too. Okay, yeah, Disney. Like, oh, oh, okay, it. Disney. <laughs> oh, man. Disney. It was very good. Very strong in all in all areas. So kudos to you guys. It, was awesome. it really was a meditation nice, on Matt. inequality, yeah. actually. Is so- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe thanks everyone for yeah. watching it. That kid was woke. Yeah, seriously. That kid was woke, <laughs> woke. as shit. You, you know, one of my favorite comments today <laughs> was, was on, on YouTube. Somebody was like, I bet he has worms under his eyes, doesn't he? Yes. I was like, I never even thought about that. He was talking about the kid. Uh, okay. Yeah, that I didn't either. confused me so much. Me too. But I loved it because it just seemed unhinged. <laughs> I was like, wow. Like, my God, what a scary idea. And it also yeah. fits in with Outland, too, because the, the, there's a worm parasite in that thing. I was like, man, right. this is a deep fan. All right. I'm so yeah. glad I have that clarification cool. now. Yeah. So I was like, whoa, that was that was an out there comment. But you know, most <laughs> all the comments were were really supportive and lovely. And uh, thank you, everyone who watched. Yeah. And one yeah. last thing I want to say is we set up a special landing page for this on our website. So if you go to perfectorganism.com slash transmission, you will get not only a link to this film, but also a link to the things leading up to it, including Alien Outland, Alien Abandon, and also some graphics and things. And, and then you'll be able to go right into the movie with the backstory that you need. So yeah, so you can watch this movie and then find out more about Joe in outland and find out more about Elliot. Elliot too. Like yeah. this is like, it's kind of circular. So you can kind of keep investigating. So who knows the next thing we might do might also be connected to this. I'm yes. Sure. I'm Universe, baby. I'm do it. It's going to be three hours. Happy Alien Day, everybody. Happy Alien Day. Happy Alien Day. Happy Alien Day. Bye, everybody. Let's go on. Bye, you guys. Yeah, thanks, Matt. See you guys. To find out more information about Perfect Organism, the Alien Saga podcast, please go to www.perfectorganism.com. If you'd like to support the show, please go to www.perfectorganism.com forward slash support. Thank you.